Welcome back to The Independence. NSA spying is on everyone's mind, and the American public isn't buying the president's line. We spoke earlier with Dr. Ron Paul about the spy agency and asked him what he thought of the president's announced reforms. Well, not really. The speech was a lot of nonsense, and he has no serious intent to improve things, and he uh, only touched on a few of the things that his own commission suggested that he do. But, you know, if we're looking for good things, which we always should, uh, he was bragging about, you know, at least we're having this very, very healthy discussion <laughs> about the pros and cons. Now, that is healthy, but what he fails to recognize is the fact that uh, if it hadn't been for uh, Edward Snowden, we wouldn't be having it. So, on one hand, he condemns Edward Snowden, and others consider him to be a traitor and all these horrible things. At the same time, the president is praising the idea that we're in this great America, and we have this debate, and it's a very valuable thing for our society to have this debate over our Fourth Amendment rights and what the NSA is doing. But that's all talk, and uh, I think the American people are catching on to this and realizing that uh, they don't buy into all this government rhetoric, and uh, fortunately, the American people are waking up and uh, realizing the NSA is way overstepped and, uh, and realizing that not only have they overstepped and violated our rights, it hasn't done any good. It hasn't prevented any problems or any attacks on us. So, uh, yes, I think if people analyze it in that terms, uh, something healthy can come from that so-called speech. Uh, Dr. Paul, you just referenced Edward Snowden. Uh, there's a lot of people, Diane Feinstein, Mike Rogers, who kind of label him in the traitor ca category, thinks that he's been cooperating too much with Russia. Your son, Senator Rand Paul, uh, said that we should uh, ex exert some leniency on him. Maybe he should only serve a couple of years in prison, unlike Rand Paul, you are no longer in Congress. Uh, what do you think we should do with Edward Snowden? What would President Ron Paul do with Edward Snowden? Well, I've argued the case, and I've said many times that Edward Snowden is a hero. He should be welcomed back. Uh, so if he uh, is living up to his oath of office, I mean, he didn't actually take an oath of office, but if he's living up to what he believes the Constitution says, uh, he's a lot closer to the Constitution than the clowns up there that said, well, if he would just march back here and come before our committees, and then he can be a, an official whistleblower. At the same time, we have a president that believes that he can that he can establish kill lists and assassinate an American citizen, sure, he's going to get a fair hearing. And no, nobody should believe that. But no, I think Edward Snowden is a hero. And it uh, took a long time for the country to pay respects to Daniel Ellsberg. And at that time, he was considered the worst traitor in the world for telling us the truth about how we got into Vietnam. And uh, so now we're getting the truth uh, from uh, Edward Snowden and all the things that have been going on. and. Uh, and fortunately, the uh, uh, sentiment is shifting in that direction. I don't think those individuals like uh, Rogers and Feinstein are, are going to win this. Uh, I, right, right now, they're in positions of power, but it also emphasizes why people are so sick and tired of the federal government's, their intrusion, and their respect for our liberties. So uh, yes, they may maintain their power for a while, but uh, ultimately, the sentiment with the American people people uh, growing against this government surveillance, and uh, I'm hopeful and optimistic that we'll win this fight. And Dr. Paul, I wonder about the role of secrecy here, uh, and this is something that I've asked a number of people about, uh, but I wonder what your perspective is. Obviously, a lot of the things we talked about here we only know about because of either official links, uh, leaks, uh, like the kill list, which we read about in the New York Times. Uh, that's, that's where most of us found out, and apparently the standards there um, are even lower for the standards for, for tapping your phone uh, and collecting metadata because the president just gets to decide who he's going to assassinate. Uh, but I, I wonder what your thoughts are on the appropriate role of secrecy and whether or not the government is truly benefited by having programs like this where it operates in the shadow. I mean, we don't even know how much this program costs. Right. Uh, you'd think conservatives every once in a while would look at the cost-benefit uh, ratio, and, and there isn't any, because they haven't been able to come up with any one single positive thing all the snooping has, has done. But there is, there is a role, uh, you know, for this, and the founders uh, recognized this. It, it wasn't that uh, some of this wouldn't be done for national security purposes, but it was to be strictly regulated. It was, it was to be uh, done with the judge's permission. 
permission. And even the NSA, the original intent of the NSA, was never to be used against American citizens. It was always intended to uh, provide information for national security reasons. And, uh, you know, they think about things like uh, uh, when we were engaged in uh, a worldwide conflict like World War II and what, how do you protect against this. But uh, it, it has uh, morphed into something that uh, all this money and all these wars that we have been fighting for the last two decades have done nothing to preserve our liberties. We send kids over there, they get killed and maimed and say that they're fighting for our freedoms and our Constitution. At the same time, uh, none of the wars are constitutional. And what is our own government doing to our people back here? They're destroying the Constitution. So, yes, there is a role, but it's very, very limited. And uh, it, uh, it should be for the protection. Right now, we're hardly threatened by an invasion of a foreign force. We're threatened because we're in 140 countries intruding in everybody's business over there. And that's why we've been endangered. Not because we're threatened by an invasion where maybe a little bit of information ga gathered with judicial review uh, would be uh, reasonable. One question. A lot of people, not only are they sick of the government, they cite the government as the biggest problem in their lives. Uh, people's reaction to the NSA speech, they're skeptical. How does your son ride this wave of discontentment to the White House? Well, I haven't thought that through because that's his question to answer. But I think I think it's a big issue, and he's sort of leading the charge on that and talking about you know uh, legal action and these sorts of things. So uh, I think it's a powerful issue. Uh, I think the uh, issues that I've dealt with with over the years uh, weren't always necessarily the most prominent powerful issue. Uh, you know, I did a lot of work with uh, you know the Federal Reserve. And and uh, I felt good about that because it became an issue. That people became knowledgeable about it. In this case, on, on snooping and all, I think it's powerful, it's important, it's a constitutional issue, and can be very beneficial to anybody who champions that cause, cause in, a, in a political way. All right, Dr. Paul, thank you so much for coming back on The Independence. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you. All right, take care. Then we will hear more from him. Uh, Ron Paul is going to be on this Friday during our special health care on life support on The Independence. And coming up, ultra lefty Jesse Meyerson makes his brave return. Will he fold under pressure when we play Ask a Communist? And next, is Ohio using cruel and unusual punishment by experimenting with the death penalty lethal injection cocktail? We'll tell you. I'd like to inject you with my own cocktail. Stay here.